Have you guys seen this? Look how cute. I mean, like, literally, look at this. It's Funko Pop size. That's insane. But this is Canon's new vlogging camera, and it's also the doorbuster budget camera of the holiday season in 2023. This guy is the successor to the Canon G7X Mark III, which is the successor to the wildly famous Canon G7X Mark II, the camera that built a thousand YouTube channels. This guy is down from its typical price of $429, which is way too much, to $350, which brings it down to where the Sony ZV-1F is at when you have a sale and the EDU bundle. Um, it's on sale at Best Buy, it's on sale at b and anywhere that you can buy this camera, you can get it for $350 right now. It's got a little tiny two-inch screen, it's got this giant record button on the front, you flip it up, and you're good to go. You're recording. See? There we go. Easy as pie. It's truly the fastest camera to pull out and use that I've ever seen. The only camera that probably is as quick to start recording with is probably the ZV-1F, ZV-1, and ZV-1 Mark II that you just open the screen and the camera's immediately on waiting for you to hit record. But this guy is so cute. It's so tiny. I mean, like, literally, look at this. It's pocketable. It is literally pocketable. It's tiny. It's the size of a credit card. It's the size of a Funko Pop. It is just adorable. And it looks like one of those flip cams from like the early 2000s that every millennial had. Like, it's so sick. I love this guy. Some of the noteworthy specs that you want to know if you're thinking about picking this guy up this holiday season is it's got a 6.6 .6 millimeter focal length, which in full frame, that's probably closer to an 18 millimeter, but really with image stabilization. It's really a 19 millimeter focal length, which is perfectly wide enough for vlogging. It's got a maximum aperture of f2.8, so it will actually do pretty okay in low light scenarios. Oh, and another exciting thing about this camera is it's got an internal ND filter that you can turn on, you can turn off, and it has an automatic mode, so it's perfect for vlogging. We'll see how it looks in an indoor lighting scenario. We're on the Canon V10, so we are sitting directly in front of this window. It's the same shot. So how are we looking? How are we doing? How is our contrast based autofocus doing? A big complaint that a lot of users of this camera are complaining about is the fact that it doesn't have Canon's typical dual pixel autofocus that's been a staple of Canon cameras since the Canon 80D back in the rise of vlogging in 2016. Um, and it's also not the same autofocus that the Canon G7X Mark II have, which is also the dual base autofocus. But I can see the little box on the screen. It's tracking my face, no problem. I'm gonna try to fake it out. How's it doing? Did it lock in my face? I mean, the flip screen on this camera is only two inches, so I really can't do a detail check on this guy. But I can see the box following my face, so I think it's probably doing pretty well. But this is a consistent lighting scenario. So for your typical vlogging stuff, I don't know how much we can trust this. But overall, the image, yeah, I'll take that. That passes the quality test. When I look at cameras like this, the first thing I look for is like, is there obvious noise anywhere in this image? And so far, based on my two inch screen, I am not seeing anything yet. So for the rest of this video, we're gonna compare Canon V10 footage in Miami to Canon G7X Mark II footage in Los Angeles, California. So this is gonna be a fun video. You tune into a good one.
Okay, so here we go. We are currently live on the Canon V10. We are in a tree canopy at the Deering Estate, and this is where I tested the Sony ZV-1F a couple of months ago. And when I was in this spot with the Sony ZV-1F, something that I noticed was the fact that the different tree lighting would make it lose its focus. So my face would be in focus, and then the background wouldn't be in focus. So I'm curious to see how the Canon V10 does with this. Um, also, how does it look? I'm taking nice big full steps right now. How is the image stabilization working? Right now I have Canon's typical digital IS on. I'm really curious to see if there's any rolling shutter happening. Is my head looking jittery? Uh, is my body looking jittery? Is the background jittery? Is it ugly? It's a two inch screen, but I like the colors that I'm seeing. Okay, so admittedly, I'm out here in much nicer conditions than I was with the Sony ZV-1F. It's about to be blue hour, the sun is setting, but how do I look? How is the internal ND filter working? It's having to work extremely hard right now because I'm in a spot that has got direct sunlight and then in a spot that is um, much more shaded. But overall, like I like the colors that I'm seeing. Everything's punchy. How is that green looking? I feel like the Canon colors should be screaming and doing really good work right now. I think I'm literally getting eaten alive by mosquitoes, but how are we looking? How are we looking? You can see good cloud reflection. You can see good reflection off the water. All right, so we're under the canopy again. It is darker. How are we doing? Also, this camera, a couple of other fun facts, is it has different picture profiles but they're not the typical standard picture profiles, and quite frankly, that's not something that I'm even gonna entertain because it's a Canon camera, for God's sake. You're gonna use the standard picture profile. That's why you shoot Canon. This is an indoor type of lighting situation that this camera shouldn't do well since it's contrast-based autofocus, but we have different color yellow lights, white lights, so this is where you should see the focus starting to shift with a camera like this. Again, I'm curious how this camera's gonna process noise with this one inch sensor, but you know, I guess we'll see when we get it back into post-production. But how's it look so far? Do we have corners? Is this the rolling shutter coming in? Clearly not the Canon V10 anymore. So welcome to the Sony ZV-E1, or as I call it, the Sony FX3 Mini. Um, and this is definitely no longer Florida. I no longer have the Canon V10 in my possession. Yilong actually bought it and took it back to China. I think that camera is currently just outside of Beijing as we speak. Um, but I wanted to come here and wrap up my thoughts about the Canon V10. So. So here's the thing about the Canon V10. It's a cool camera and for the price of $350, it is enticing, but it doesn't really quite perform in the same class as other cameras that have the exact same sensor as it. For example, now the Canon G7X Mark II does have Canon's famous dual pixel autofocus, but it's updated camera, the G7X Mark III, has the same contrast-based autofocus that this camera does have. And what's funky about the way this camera is the way that it performs, when you set it down and it takes a second to like lock onto you, the image quality gets there, it's good again. But as far as a vlogging camera goes, for a sensor that has to pick up movement, dynamic lighting features, and just things that are out of your control, the Canon V10 really does seem to struggle in this area. And because of this, I'm not sure I can recommend it over the Sony ZV-1F that I've reviewed previously. The whole thing about vlogging cameras is no, the image doesn't have to look perfect, but the image does need to not be jarring. And the thing about all of these small vlogging cameras is when they get the price below $1,000, usually they start stripping away things like in-body image stabilization or reliable autofocus. And that's the same big issue that the Sony ZV-1F has is the rolling shutter is a little nasty 
when you are walking around with the camera. And unfortunately, the Canon V10 suffers from the same type of deficit. You jump up to the older Sony ZV-1. It does have it covered, but you have a much tighter lens at 24 millimeters. The new Sony ZV-1 F2, I have played with that camera. It is nice, but the problem with that guy, again, is they've stripped away your stabilization to get you that 20 millimeter focal length and you've got that nasty rolling shutter. So it really is a problem with vlogging cameras. And if they're gonna have that deficit, my recommendation is just to save up a little bit more money and go for a bigger camera that you're gonna use for much longer. So for the price of $350, the Canon V10 really is quite enticing, but there are two kind of major things for me that make it hard for me to recommend it to you. The first thing is that this camera doesn't have a removable battery. Every single camera I've owned, I know about how much battery life I can rely on for my camera. After a few different use cases, you know how much life you can rely on out of the battery. The Canon V10 charges via USB-C and it's got an internal battery. I don't like that. Every single time that I turn the camera on, the battery is almost always at four bars, totally full. But the second I recorded a clip with it that was over three minutes long, then you've got one bar, then you've got two bars. And that's just really frustrating when it comes to the reliability of a piece of technology. So for me, that's a big thing that bothers me with that camera. The second major thing that does bother me with this camera is the fact that it does not use full size SD cards. Now this isn't the hugest deal because I mean, anybody who suffered a MacBook Pro between 2015 and 2020 has one of those stupid dongles, but at the end of the day, it is one of those things that if you forget your micro SD card reader, you're in a lot of trouble. And I really have tons of normal size SD cards. And the only time I use a micro SD card is for my drone and those never really leave my drone to begin with. Who is this camera for? If you are somebody who is going to do the vlogging thing and you wanna run around with your camera or you wanna take it into different lighting areas and expect it to perform, the Canon V10 is not for you. If you want to pay this price for a camera, I would highly recommend going for the Sony ZV-1F. Here, there's a video to it right here if you want my opinion on that camera. The form factor of this camera is a big thing that makes it fun. That built-in stand makes it work perfectly. It's easy to move around a desk, a table, anywhere you might be taking a Zoom call. and. You really can't go wrong if you're using it as a webcam. It did pretty well. It did pretty well, and I would say it's a quality image if the camera is static and stationary. So is this camera for you? I can't say, I really can't say. It all depends on your use case. So if you want a webcam that gives you a good clean image, yes. If you want something that has got a really tiny form factor and you're gonna shoot tiny clips standing still, yes, the Canon V10 will work for you. In all the other cases, I do hate to say this, but I think the Sony ZV-1F at that education discount or even at $400 at its normal um, sale price around the holidays, I think is probably a better buy. Anyway guys, I hope you found some value in this video. And remember, if you're new here, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're not, thank you so, so much for showing back up. And remember, new videos weekly, seriously in 2024, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks. For all that